Have you ever thought about never having to pay for your internet again? Believe me, there are ways to access the internet for free using simple resources and homemade solutions. To perform this interesting trick, the first step is to separate a light bulb, preferably one that no longer works. Ideally, it should be a bulb that you have already tested and are sure is burnt out to avoid wasting it. With the lamp in hand, the next step is to remove the bulb. To do this, use a very sharp utility knife. Carefully run the blade around the base, slightly cutting the glue that holds the bulb to the socket. Do this process very carefully. The goal is to release the bulb without damaging the rest of the lamp structure. Now, use a drill with a fine bit to make a precise hole in the module. This small hole is used to make it easier to remove the LED module, as it is usually well fixed internally. Using tweezers or a small screwdriver, gently pull out the module. This part may vary depending on the bulb model, so adapt the technique if necessary, always prioritizing the safety and integrity of the parts you intend to use. The secret to this experiment is to use a magnet measuring approximately 40 by 18 by 7 millimeters. In addition to the magnet, separate two pieces of flexible copper wire, each about one millimeter thick and approximately 50 centimeters long. The goal is to create a simple electromagnet using only these two materials. Take one of the wires and wrap it around half of the magnet, making about seven tight turns. Repeat the same process with the second wire, wrapping seven turns around the other half of the magnet. Don't worry about the color of the wires. They can both be the same color, as long as they are copper and insulated to prevent short circuits. The important thing is to make sure that the turns are evenly distributed and tight, so that the magnetic field is created efficiently. This winding method ensures that the magnetic field lines are concentrated and enhance the interaction between the magnet and the wires, enabling the generation of electricity or the creation of an electromagnet, depending on the application. If you are having trouble finding a magnet of this type, you should know that it is possible to reuse magnets taken from old radio speakers, which can be easily found at scrap metal or electronic stores. This alternative is economical and sustainable, as well as being a great way to reuse materials that would otherwise be discarded. Remember, the secret lies in the precision of the turns and the good contact between the wire and the magnet. The firmer and more uniform the turns, the more efficient the magnetic field will be. With attention and patience, you will be ready to explore the fascinating principles of electricity and magnetism. Carefully remove the tip of each wire, exposing the copper inside. This is essential to ensure good electrical conduction and facilitate the soldering process later on. Next, we'll use a USB smartphone charger cable. In my case, I'm using a Type-C model, but this procedure works for any type of USB cable, regardless of your smartphone model. After cutting, notice that there may be two or more internal wires inside the cable. The quantity and colors may vary depending on the manufacturer. Share in the comments which city and country you are watching from right now. This participation is very important to me because it allows me to get to know better who follows the channel and where each of you comes from. I am very happy to know how far our content is reaching and to create an even closer and more connected community. Don't forget to comment. I would love to know where you are watching us from. The next step is to prepare the base of the lamp. Take a drill and make a hole in the plastic base of the lamp, preferably with a four millimeter diameter drill bit. This hole will be used to pass the USB cable through safely and neatly. Feed the USB cable through the hole, leaving the ends of the wires exposed on the inside of the lamp base. To ensure that the cable does not slip out or break easily, secure it with a nylon cable tie. Simply fit the cable tie around the cable near where it exits the hole and tighten until it is secure. If necessary, Trim off the excess cable tie for a clean, secure finish. Also have a socket type adapter on hand, equipped with a plug and on-off switch. Before any assembly, sand the ends of the socket pins, ensuring that they are clean, free of rust, paint, or residue, thus favoring more efficient and safe welding. 
This detail is important so that the solder can adhere correctly to the metal of the pins. Now, gather two paper clips, preferably size 8, which are more robust and easier to handle. Using fine sandpaper, sand the ends of the paper clips at the points where the soldering will be done. This step is essential to remove any layer of varnish or dirt, making it easier for the solder to adhere and ensuring reliable electrical contact. To strengthen the solder joint, use solder paste. Apply a small amount to the sanded spots on the socket pins and the ends of the paper clips. With a properly heated soldering iron, make two solder points, one on each pin of the socket. Then, attach each paper clip to one of the pins by fusing them together with the melted solder. Hold the pieces still until the solder cools and hardens, firmly attaching the paper clips to the pins. To ensure the success of this project, it is essential to have a SIM card, preferably a six-pin model. The process begins by carefully scraping the metal part of pins two and six, removing the surface layer to expose the shiny metal and ensure better electrical conductivity. Of these two pins, pin six is the most important, as it will be responsible for data input and output throughout the circuit's operation. Once this is done, you must prepare two solder points on the shaved pins. Now, to further enhance your project, it is highly recommended to have a coaxial antenna cable available, one of those easily found in electronic stores. Although the cable looks robust, what really matters here is the copper wire inside it. Measure approximately 50 centimeters of this copper wire, and patiently strip off all the plastic coating, revealing only the bare metal. Once stripped, cut the wire in half, creating two parts of equal length. Subscribing to our channel is the best way to keep up with all our content and not miss any news. By subscribing, you guarantee first-hand access to the latest videos, exclusive tips, and much more. Take this moment to click the subscribe button and become part of our community. Join us and always stay up to date with everything we prepare especially for you. Your participation is very important. With the two halves of the copper wire in hand, use a Phillips screwdriver, preferably with a metal shaft, to wind the wires together and form two small springs in a spiral shape. This spring shape will allow for better signal and flexibility in future fittings. If you don't have coaxial cable available, you can use a rigid copper electrical wire as an alternative. Simply mold it into a small spring shape, similar to the procedure used with coaxial cable. While not ideal, this type of adaptation can pick up signals reasonably well, especially for lower frequencies or for improvised situations. However, the quality and efficiency may vary compared to using the proper cable. Next, solder a coil spring to each of the SIM card pins that were previously stripped, that is, pins 2 and 6. This step requires precision, as the soldering must be firm, without excess, ensuring that the copper wire is well fixed and that current passes through well. Continuing with the project, now prepare the electromagnet. With the magnet in hand and the copper wires previously organized, join two of the wires coming from inside the lamp to the LED module. Solder these connections firmly and, to ensure safety and avoid short circuits, use insulating tape or, preferably, a heat shrink tube. Place the tube over the solder and use a lighter to heat it, making it mold around the wires, providing perfect insulation. The remaining two wires of the electromagnet must be soldered to the terminals of the USB cable. Once again, do not forget the heat shrink insulation, which is essential to avoid any unwanted contact between the wires. The soldering process here must be careful, ensuring that the wires are well secured and that there is no risk of poor contact. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can splice the wires manually. To do this, twist the bare ends of the wires tightly together to ensure good conduction. After splicing, use quality insulating tape to completely wrap the area, 
preventing contact with other wires and protecting against short circuits. Make sure the splice is firm and secure before turning on the circuit. Finally, it's time to put all the parts of the project together. Take the SIM card device, now with the copper wires soldered to the correct pins, and connect each terminal to a pin on the socket. Now the bulb of a common light bulb, the kind that lights up our homes, is transformed into a fundamental piece. A little hot glue is applied to its base, attaching a sturdy magnet, measuring 55 by 24 by 10 millimeters. It may seem like just a detail, but it will soon make perfect sense. With the magnet firmly attached, the next step is to prepare the electromagnet. All the wires are now connected, ready to conduct energy and enable the device to operate. The electromagnet is carefully inserted into the bulb. Finally, you need to get a plug adapter, the kind that simulates the socket of a conventional light bulb. It is screwed on as if it were a regular light bulb, and it is important to make sure that the power button on the socket is activated. The crucial moment has arrived to test what has been developed so far. The chosen device is a smartphone, and it is carefully prepared to operate completely outside of any network. With the browser open, the page does not load. There is no mobile data signal, since no chip is inserted in the device. Wi-Fi remains disabled, preventing any connection attempts. To ensure even greater isolation, airplane mode has been activated, blocking even residual communication signals. Every detail has been designed to eliminate any possibility of accessing the internet or external networks. But now the magic happens. When you connect your newly assembled device, you'll be surprised. Data starts to flow. Speed measurements appear on your smartphone's display. Data uploads and downloads are displayed in KBPS, and the speed reaches over 120 kilobits per second. This isn't an impressive speed compared to fiber optic or 4G connections, but it's enough for a variety of everyday tasks. Most surprising of all, it's an unlimited connection, capable of meeting basic internet access needs. Even if the speed isn't the fastest, the freedom to browse without limits and without costs makes all the difference. An unlimited, free, and accessible connection transforms the way we communicate, learn, and work every day. If you found this information useful, share it with your friends and family so that everyone can enjoy this new feature.